So one sentence of advice to some sophomore or junior who's watching this today and, and thinks to himself, gee, Dr. Soul just told me the America in which I'm going to grow up will be a shrunken place. No, no, no. Uh, it's, it, it's not always to look over, as Yogi Berra said. And uh, I, I would say to this young person, if we, through some miracle, get through this, please take to heart the lesson of what happened. When you vote on the basis of uh, rhetoric, symbolism, and instead of using your mind, uh, it doesn't matter how smart you are unless you stop and think. Dr. Thomas Sowell, the author of Dismantling America, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm Peter Robinson for Uncommon Knowledge and the Hoover Institution. Thank you. Bill Buckley, quote, I would rather be governed by the first 400 names in the Boston Telephone Book than by the faculty of Harvard, close quote. Very nice encapsulation right. of, of, of the impulse you'd hope that most Americans would show to yes. be suspicious of the experts. When Bill Buckley made that remark in the 1960s, roughly 9% of Americans held college degrees. Mm -hmm. Today, the figure is 29%. And rising, because roughly half of high school graduates go to college, the first 400 names in the Boston Telephone Book today are likely to include a large number of Harvard graduates and Harvard professors. The question here is simple. Are we becoming a nation of intellectuals? Uh, I hadn't thought of that. It would be, it's, it's, it's a chilling thought. Because we, we're becoming a nation of people who are propagandized from elementary school right on through to the graduate school in a certain vision of the world. And only the ones who, for one reason or another, uh, either experience or insight or whatever, leads them to say, wait a minute. O only those are the ones that we have to depend on. Last question. Yeah. If you had a sentence or two to say to the cabinet assembled around President Obama, and this cabinet holds glittering degrees from one impressive institution after another, if you could beseech them to be, conduct themselves in one particular way between now and the time they all leave office, what would you say? Actually, I would say only one word, goodbye, because I know there's no point to talking to them. It's like, it's like asking you, how, what would I say to the head of the mafia uh, to, to get him to give up crime? There wouldn't be a thing I could say to him. All right. He would say, give up crime.